Sanctum Mysteries, brought to you transcribed by High Potency Ends, America's most popular, truly effective chlorophyll tablets. Good evening, friends of the creaking door. This is your host inviting you into the inner sanctum once again. Come in. You're early tonight. The coroner hasn't arrived yet. But it's all right. The corpse is here. Yes, that's him over there in the corner. The slightly decapitated gentleman sitting with his head in his hands. <laughs> Friends, let's gather round and meet that grim reaper, Mr. Macabre. No, 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 no. Don't try to run away. Lie perfectly still. If you race with Mr. Macabre, you're liable to end up in a dead heat. From the living room of a small house that has seen better days, a single light shines in the early evening. Inside, Grace Denning waits alone for her father to come home. Anxiously lighting one cigarette from the other, she paces the floor. Until at last, she hears his footsteps on the porch stairs. Father? Is that you, Father? Yes, dear. Oh, were you worried about me? Well, you're never this late for dinner. I thought something might have happened to you. You weren't down at the river again, were you, Father? No, no. Well, where were you? Just downtown. I... Uh... I stopped off for a minute. Grace, why are you staring at me? Well, you look so strange, so frightened. Well, I should be frightened. You know what it's like to live without money week after week, waiting, hoping for a break that never comes. Well, don't worry, darling. Your luck will change. I'm not worried anymore. You got the loan? Yes. From the bank? No. From Dr. Tarleton. Dr. Tarleton? He wouldn't lend you any money. He wouldn't lift a finger to help you. Why not? He's an old friend of mine, isn't he? Well, I wouldn't call him a friend. Not after the way he's treated you all these years. He still hasn't forgiven you for taking Mother away from him. Don't be a fool. Well, he hasn't. He's still in love with her. He told me so. At the funeral. Well, what difference does it make? I've got the money, haven't I? But how did you get it? I told you he lent it to me. Why did he lend you that money? Because I... I gave him something in return. What? I... I sold him my brain. What do you mean, Father? I willed it to him in return for the loan. Your brain? Yes. He said it would be of value to him in his experiments. He said the medical school was making a study of men with artistic talents. But you haven't painted for years. Well, Dr. Tarleton didn't really want my brain, Grace. Can't you see? It, it was just an excuse to... To torment me. Well, you're not going through with it. I won't let you. You'll have to, Grace. I've gotten the money. Then you'll give it back. I won't let you take it. Here, what are you doing? Holding him up to return that money. Put that phone down. Your father, let go. Drive you out of your mind if you accept this loan. Let me speak to him. Dr. Tarleton's office. Miss Henry speaking. Hello. Oh, Miss Henry. Is, is Dr. Tarleton there? Why, who's calling, please? This is Miss Denning. George Denning's daughter. Would you ask the doctor to come to the phone, please? I'm afraid I can't, Miss Denning. Dr. Tarleton is dead. Miss Henry, I... I hope you don't mind my coming over here. I'm asking you all these questions, but... You see, Dr. Tarleton was an old friend of the family's, and... I, I'm rather anxious to know the circumstances. I understand, Miss Denning. 
Dr. Tarleton often spoke of you and your mother. Uh, when did he die, Miss Henry? This afternoon, about five o'clock. We can't be sure of the exact time. Nobody was with him when he died. Nobody? As far as we know. I was out of the office on an errand when it happened, and when I got back, he was dead. But what happened to him? I mean, it was all so sudden. Did he have a heart attack or something? Well, he was subject to dizzy spells, Miss Denning. He probably had one this afternoon. Oh, I see. But I'm not sure that's what caused the accident. Accident? Yes, he fell against the instrument cabinet in his office and broke the glass. The edge of it cut an artery in his neck, and he died before anyone could reach him. How awful. Well, what makes you think it wasn't an accident? I don't know. I just have a feeling it might have been murder. Why? Was anybody with Dr. Tarleton when you left this afternoon? Yes, a man by the name of Macabre. Who? Mr. Macabre. I don't know his first name or anything about him, but the police are investigating him right now. And there wasn't anybody else this afternoon? Not that I know of. Are you sure? Didn't Dr. Tarleton have an appointment with a man who was interested in some sort of brain experiment? What's that? An elderly gentleman, tall, with gray hair and a long, thin face. Why, Miss Denning? That was Mr. Macabre. Yes. Where have you been, Grace? Oh, uh, just uh, out for a walk. Now, don't lie to me. Where have you been? Over to Dr. Tarleton's office. Yes? Yeah, well, what for? I told you not to meddle in my business. Tarleton's dead and my bargain with him is automatically canceled. Is that the agreement you made with him, Father? My agreement with Dr. Tarleton doesn't matter anymore. It doesn't to me, Father. But it might to the police. If they find a copy of that agreement. What are you driving at? Don't you think they'll find out Tarleton's death wasn't an accident? Good heavens, Grace. You don't think I killed him, do you? You don't think I murdered a man for the sake of a few hundred dollars? What did you do? You were in his office at five o'clock this afternoon, weren't you? Uh, who told you that? What difference does it make? Miss Henry knows you were there. She told me all about it. I didn't speak to Miss Henry. Mr. McCobb did. Oh, for heaven's sake, Father, don't you think the police will see through a trick like that? They're out looking for you right now. Well, confounded, Grace. I didn't kill Dr. Carlton. And I never heard of Mr. McCobb. Now, let's not talk about him. All right, Father. If you want to bluff it through, I can't stop you. Only I wish that... Just a minute. I'll, I'll get that. No, no, let me. It, it, it may be the police. Hello? Hello, Miss Denny? Yes? I've got to see you right away. I have something to tell you about the murder of Dr. Tarleton. What, what do you mean? I can't talk to you over the phone, but if you'll come down to 54 Palmer Street right away, I'll, uh, I'll tell you all about it. But, come but... alone, Miss Denning. And come quickly. Just a moment. You haven't told me who you are. Oh, I'm sorry. The name is... Mr. McCobb. All right, all right, I'm coming. Yes, what do you want? Why, I'm, I'm Miss Denning. Weren't you expecting me? I never expect anybody around here, especially at this time of night. What did you ring the bell for? Well, I... I, I was supposed to meet somebody here. Are you I... sure you got the right address? This is the university medical school. The autopsy lab. We're closed up for the night. That's strange. I was sure he said 54 Palmer Street. Who was this? One of the students? No. Um, a, a friend of mine. Well, it's a funny place to be meeting a friend of yours. But if he said he'd be here, well, maybe you better come in. Well, well, I... Come don't... on, I don't mind you waiting on the inside. Sure. Yeah, I'm always glad to have a little company around. A place like this kind of gets under your skin. What do you mean? Ain't you never been to a medical school before? No, I... Well, there ain't nothing to be afraid of, lady, but it's just like being in a morgue with them dead ones around, especially tonight. Why tonight? And didn't you read in the papers what happened? Didn't you see where that doctor got killed under mysterious circumstances? Dr. Tarleton? Yeah, that's the one. You you knew Dr. Tarleton? Oh, sure I knew him. He used to teach down here. Anatomy. Oh, 
I didn't know that. Maybe that's why I was told to come here. Because of Dr. Tarleton? You know something about his death? No. But the man I'm supposed to meet here does. Have you ever heard of a Mr. McCobb? McCobb? Are you waiting for Mr. McCobb? Yes. Do you know him? Who sent you here? He did. He called me up on the phone and told me he wanted to speak to me about Dr. Tarleton's death. Mr. McCobb said that? Yes. You better come with me, lady. Oh, but what's wrong? I didn't say there was anything wrong. I just want you to come with me. I've got to know if you're telling me the truth. Where are you taking me? Don't worry. It ain't far. Right in here. Come on. But stop pulling me, will you? Where are we? Where do you think? In the lab. But why did you bring me here? Didn't you say you had to see Mr. McCobb? Yes, but... Well, this is where he is. Right in that canvas bag. <gasps> it's a body. Of course it's a body. And they give them all names. The students, I mean. Oh, no. This one is Mr. McCobb. No. That's what I want to know. Who put you up to this? Who told you to come over here and tell me he was alive? Nobody. Don't lie to me. Every one of them students know I'm scared of Mr. McCobb. They've been playing tricks on me ever since I got Let here. Let go. Not until I make sure he's in that bag. What are you doing? I'm opening it up. No. Look. It's not Mr. McCobb. What? It's Dr. Tarleton. O, 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 N, stop, triple O. o, 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 o. Yes, high potency N, stop, triple O, stop odor of breath, odor of body, other personal odors, all three at the same time. That's important because anyone who comes in contact with the public should take high potency N's chlorophyll tablets as protection against all odor offense. N, stop, triple O, so effectively that just one or two N's tablets keep you fresh as a daisy all over all day. N's make triple O go, go, go. Try this test. Rub an onion slice on your hand. Now moisten an ends tablet and rub it over the same spot. Why, the odor's gone. Exactly. That's how high-potency ends act inside your body to stop odors where they begin. They're made from a more potent form of chlorophyll, contain fully effective Daritol chlorophyll, and so act faster, longer, more thoroughly than any other type of chlorophyll product. High-potency ends are guaranteed to stop triple O the very first day or money back. No deodorant, mouthwash, chlorophyll chewing gum, or toothpaste. Nothing that acts only in the mouth or on the surface can possibly stop triple O. You must take chlorophyll internally for these results. So get ENDS. That's E-N-N-D-S. ENDS. Pleasant tasting and safe as any garden vegetable. Get high potency ENDS available everywhere. Trial size only 49 cents. Larger sizes even more economical. Now that you've had a few moments to let your hair down, let's get back to our story and make it stand up again. Mm -hmm. Let's see now, where were we? Oh, yes. In that lovely little dissecting room where the university goes to meet the student body. As I remember it, Grace Denning went there, too, with a night watchman to see a man about a corpse. But the corpse didn't keep his appointment. At the last moment, Mr. McCobb got cold feet and left Dr. Tarleton holding the bag. Are you sure it's Dr. Tarleton? Can't you see it is? I'm going to call the police. Now, wait a minute. You're not going to call anybody till you tell me why you came here. I told you. You I told me a lie. You knew Dr. Tarleton was in this bag. You brought him here. Don't be a fool. Well, then who did? Who put you up to this? One of them students? No. They must have, or you wouldn't have told me that story about Mr. McCobb. Where is he? What have they done with him? Nothing. I... Please, I didn't have anything to do with it. You mean... You're not playing a trick on me? Of course not. Then it's true. It was Mr. McCobb. What? He's the one who killed Dr. Tarleton. He's the one who put him in that bag. What are you talking about? You're insane. Insane, am I? 
You don't know about Mr. McCobb. You don't know where he came from. What do you mean? His body, Miss Denning. They brought it from the state penitentiary. He was a murderer. Stop it. Stop it. No, I can't stop it. Don't you understand? We've got to find him and bring him back before it happens again. Ah, Wait, there's the phone. Hello? Hello? Is Miss Denning there, please? I... Just a minute. It's for you, Miss Denning. That call? Yes, here, answer it. Oh. Hello? Hello, Miss Denning? Yes? Tell your father not to worry about the murder. Dr. Tarleton was killed by a woman. A woman who lives at Nine River Road. How do you know? Who is this? Don't you recognize my voice? I'm Mr. McCobb. That's the house, Father. Nine River Road. Grace, you're... You're not going in there. I've got to, Father. I've got to know who this woman is. Well, then... Then I'm going with you. No, no. Please. You stay here. It may be some sort of a trap to find out where you are. I, I'm better off alone. Well, careful, Grace. Please be careful. If this woman is a murderer, Don't worry, Father. Just stay in the car and I'll, I'll call you if I need you. Well, all right, dear. I'll, I'll be right here. Come in, Miss Henning. Miss Henry. Yes. Dr. Tarleton's nurse. Good heavens. How did you know I was at the door? I saw your car drive up. Come in, won't you? But, well, I... Quick, Miss Denning, come in. I've got to talk to oh, you. What's the matter? Shh. I'll tell you in a minute. Just let me close the door. There. That's better. Now I can speak freely. You act as though you were expecting me, Miss Henry. I was. That's strange. Nobody knew I was coming. Oh, but you're wrong. I had a message saying you were. A message? From whom? Well, he wouldn't give me his name over the phone, but I had a feeling it was Mr. McCobb. Remember? He's the man I told you about at the office, the one the police are looking for. He called you on the phone? About ten minutes ago. What did he say? Well, he didn't want to talk very much, but he said you were coming over to see me about Dr. Tarleton's death. He said you suspected me of committing the murder. What do you mean? Do you, Miss Denning? Why, no. I have no reason to suspect you. What made you think I did? Just the fact that he said so. And the way you're looking at me right now. How did you find out about the letter opener, Miss Denning? (sighs) What letter opener? The one that's missing from Dr. Tarleton's desk. Who told you about it? Why, nobody. I... I didn't know it was missing until you just mentioned it. Then why did you come here? Because Mr. McDonald... Don't blame it on him. He never saw that letter opener. Well, neither did I. I, I don't, don't even understand what connection it has. Don't but... you, Miss Denning? Why would a letter opener be taken from Dr. Tarleton's desk unless it had been used to commit the murder? You mean Dr. Tarleton was stabbed to death? He might have been. The murderer could have stabbed him first and broken the instrument cabinet later to make it look like an accident. Only that isn't the way it happened. How do you know? I know because that letter opener isn't really missing. It's just been mislaid somewhere. And if I had a chance to search the office, I'd probably find it. Why don't you search the office now, Miss Henry? I will. If you'll come with me. All right. I'll come with you. Good. I felt rather peculiar about going down there alone, but if you're with me... Miss Denning, what's the matter? Behind you, look. At the back window. What? 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 I don't don't see anything. It was there, I tell you. It was there a moment ago. What? A face peering in through the window. It's macabre. That's funny. There doesn't seem to be anyone else back here. It must have been your imagination. No, I saw it. I tell you, there was something. Wait. What is it? Thought I heard something move behind the garage. Quick, let's go in there. We can look through the back window without being seen. Careful now. We must make a sound. Here. Hold on to my arm. I can't see a thing, Miss Henry. <laughs> Who? Who's there? Don't be afraid, Miss Denny. It's me. Who are, who are you? Mr. Crane, don't you remember? 
The night watchman from the medical school. What are you doing here? I'm looking for Mr. McCobb. He's around here somewhere. I just saw him. But where? Out in the field, behind the garage. I don't see anyone out here. You're not looking in the right place. Come with me. I'll show him to you. No, don't. Don't go with him, Miss Henry. Why not? It may take two of us to bring him back. He might not want to come with me. Please. Will you leave us alone, Mr. Crane? Go back to your job and let the police find Mr. McCobb. No, no, wait. He might know where Mr. McCobb really is. Of course I know. I just told you he was down there in the field. Then you go find him, Mr. Crane, and wait for me. I'll be there in a minute. All right, all right. But don't leave me out there alone with him too long. For heaven's sake, Miss Henry, don't you know that man's crazy? Crazy or not, I've got to know what he's up to. Here, take the key to Dr. Tarleton's office and go down there right away. Aren't you coming with me? Not until I find out about Mr. McCobb. Don't worry, Miss Denning. I'll meet you at the doctor's office in a few minutes. Are you sure you'll be all right? Of course, of course. Go ahead. All right. I'll... I'll see you later. Mr. McCobb! Mr. McCobb! Oh, Mr. Crane? Where are you? Why don't you answer me? Here. Who's on that path? Who? No, don't. Don't. The letter opener. The same letter opener. Father. Aren't you in the car, Father? Where are you? It's all right, Grace. I, I'm here. Oh, where? Right here in the doorway. Why did you... You think I'd left you? I didn't know where you were. Why didn't you wait for me in the car? Oh, I don't know. I just got tired sitting there. Besides, I thought I heard some voices back in the house. Is there anything wrong? No. At least I don't think so. I, I'll know better after we get to Dr. Tarleton's office. What are you going down there for? A letter opener, Father. I've got to find out if it's really missing. Oh, Grace, will you stop butting into other people's business? But this is our business. Don't you understand? Are you coming with me? Or shall I go alone? No, no, dear. I'll, I'll go with you. Wait right here, Father. Just outside the door. Let me know if anybody comes down the hall. Even Miss Henry. All right, but hurry. I'll be as quick as I can. Oh, I should have turned on the light before I closed that door. Now, where on earth is that light switch? Oh. But what's the matter with this thing? That doesn't work. No. No, it doesn't, Grace. Who said that? I did. Don't you recognize my voice? No. Where are you? Over here. Sitting at my desk. Dr. Tarleton. Yes. You're alive. No, my dear. I'm just living on borrowed time for a while. Just long enough to tell the police who murdered me. It's a trick. You're not really dead. No. You shouldn't have come back here to return that letter opener. That was the trap we set for you. Only we never dreamed you'd kill Miss Henry. You fool! Who are you? Dr. Carlton, dear. The man who was foolish enough to leave you half his estate because of your mother. You're a murderess, Miss Denning. Be quiet! Be quiet or I'll kill you! You can't kill me, Grace. You've done it already. Don't do it again! I'll do it right this time, the way I killed Miss Henry! Here, put that letter opener down. <laughs> Grab her, Gus. I've got her hand. Oh, don't touch me. It's all right, Miss Denning. We won't frighten you anymore. We've got all the evidence we need now. You're a detective. You guessed it. But the dead man. The one you had propped up in the chair. Who was that? Don't you know? That was Mr. McCobb. Well, that was a corny stunt for Macabre to play. If I were a corpse, I wouldn't go around frightening confessions out of murderous young ladies. I'd rather be seen dead. And speaking of death scenes, have you ever heard the one about the ambitious ghoul who left no stone unturned? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Tonight's Inner Sanctum Mystery was written by Robert Sloan and starred Barbara Weeks in the role of Grace. Everett Sloan played Crane. Music was by Lou White. This month's Inner Sanctum Mystery novel is You Could Die Laughing by Alan Green. The entire production of Inner Sanctum is under the direction of Hyman Brown. When in the summer sun over an hour a day, look out for glare fatigue. And when eyes look dull and bloodshot from wind, smoking, or reading, get hygiene. Contains Lexitol. Acts like a doctor's prescription. Just two or three soothing drops in each eye floats away that tired eye feeling. Your eye doctor will tell you, don't neglect your eyes. Use hygiene eye drops daily. E-Y-E-G-E-N-E. Safe, gentle, a tonic for your eyes. Trial size only 25 cents. Larger economy sizes too. Hygiene at drug counters everywhere. Well, friends, it's time once again to close that creaking door. Until next week at the same time. Next week's happy little horror, entitled Strange Passenger, concerns itself with a bright lad who keeps on killing the same girl over and over again until he realizes that she's taking him for a sleigh ride. <laughs> You'll be sure to listen, won't you? Until next week, then. Good night. Pleasant dreams. Be sure to join us at the same time next week for another Inner Sanctum Mystery. Brought to you transcribed by High Potency Ends, America's most popular, truly effective chlorophyll tablets. And don't forget Ends' two great television shows, Police Story on CBS TV and Lights Out on another TV network. Please check your local television listings for day and time. Carl Caruso speaking. Mm-hmm.